to address these water needs. Yeah, I understand that the needs are there, but you know, even as the one example we've heard from Redwood Valley of number four, they are expressing that they're not interested in number four. So I, I, it just seems to me that getting some investment from partners up front to share some of the burden of the costs of even the research. I mean, look at what we've already spent on the college project, and now you're saying, well, just because of the existing regulatory environment, probably that's only going to make it to number three as a priority. But we've already invested some dollars, and we're yet to see some return on that. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to be smart from a business perspective mm -hmm. to say what is what is the best use of our very limited resources, especially given that you're talking about $300,000 here that's not even allocated yet or in the proposed budget. Uh, wh how do we get people on board with us like we do in other par partnerships like IWPC where we get, you know, you've got a consortium of folks that want to invest for the greater good. So I was just trying to mm -hmm. see if that model would be appropriate here and if so, when. And for the North County project, your highest priority number one, are the Boy Scouts interested? Is Willits, Redwood Valley, have, has that been explored at all? Because that's your number one. Do they, do they need and want the water? And I think the short answer is yes. And I think okay. probably Supervisor Pinches and, and, and Tom okay. Mitchell kind of speak to those two issues respectively. I, I, I certainly appreciate what you're saying in terms of getting the partners on board and getting um, you know, financial commitments as early as possible. I, I completely agree with that. Um, the problem that I've seen here in the five years that I've been here is, is that, and I think there's an understandably now, a lot, a, people make a big splash. We start out with a project, it quickly dies. And, and, re, and there's a certain amount of skepticism now in terms of, all right, yeah, show, show, me, show me it's feasible. And I think for the county to take the lead on on if we're going to take the lead or be a leader in water somebody's got to push these studies far enough that we can say yeah this is a viable project we've done our homework and and certainly at that point I have no problem in in, in you know look if you're going to be a partner you know we've got a viable project we can move forward now with a certain degree of confidence that we could not when it's highly speculative in other words in the initial phases um, if we obviously if we could bring somebody on board right away and say yeah we're gonna you know th throw money at this that's I guess like a venture capitalist type approach that's great but but I certainly understand and can appreciate the the skepticism and 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 it's like and I do and if I was in their position too it's like show me a project that you know is reasonably certain it can be constructed and then I'll bring my wallet so. Well, that's why I started out with asking, yeah. do you reasonably think that we're actually going to see water from these projects? And yeah. you said that you did. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you, Supervisor. Um, Supervisor Pinches. Thank you, Roland. First of all, I'd like to thank you for bringing, you've done more for bringing more water to this county in the last 100, 100 days than has been done in the last 30 years. I mean, that's a fact. As far as, Kendall, the cost recovery issue, I think it's assumed, two things I think that we've assumed early on. First of all, the reason the Mendocino County Water Agency has taken the lead here is because I think it's appropriate that they take the lead. So wherever the water and project, water, water project is done and developed, the water will de be distributed to the water purveyors in this county on an equal basis. <clears throat> so, you know, that's who the partners are going to be, is where the water goes, and that's when it can pay for the project in the long term. Water is worth money. It's not like building a road where you have a total cost you know you know this is kind of like building a toll road the revenue from the water will pay pay for the the money the borrowed money that it takes to do the project you know so what we're talking about here is the best project and there's been a lot of work in looking at you know the scout lake is listed number one here for good reason but it's actually better than just the number one because if you look at the cost per acres that is considering the the, the building uh, the enlarging of the existing Scout Lake plus, plus the two auxiliary reservoirs. So if you cut that in third, probably the cost per acre foot goes down tremendously. So it makes it a lot more cost effective project. And especially, I believe that the emphasis on it, to me it's a no-brainer that we move forward with the Scout Lake. It's none of the other, none of the other locations compare in amount of water. They don't compare. It's assumed that the Russian River watershed is over-appropriated. 
this is clearly off-site storage. We don't have to deal with the Federal Endangered Species Act. The amount of water we're going to get, the people that it benefits, it's going to benefit Willits. It'll benefit Redwood Valley, clear down into the whole Ukiah Valley if you need it. But if we move, instead of moving to the auxiliary lakes, if we just look at to, which I was pleased to hear, the, the existing Scout Lake and raising that reservoir, if we can raise it, say, 20 feet, that's probably a 5,000 acre foot reservoir, which you'll, if you look at the steady needs of Willits and, and Brook Trails included, actually, in Ukiah Valley, it'll meet the needs. It'll meet our 20, 30, 40 year needs. And it's, the cost of it, because we're talking about an existing reservoir that's there. And if you've ever been up there, the reservoir, the dam isn't very long. You, you don't even lose a year, like in, in Willits, they're losing a year increasing the capacity of Lake Emily because they had to drain it. With the Scott Lake, you don't have to drain it because you can, uh, you can raise it from the, from the downstream side up. You won't even lose one year's supply of water. We have a willing, a cooperating landowner already available. A larger lake will add to recreational capacity there. So to me, it's it's a no-brainer. But you know, four or five thousand acre foot of water will get us out of our situation of building moratoriums and all that. This is not about growth in this county. It's about sustainability. But this project, and another thing that's really important that none of the other projects have over a fifty-year life, lifetime of a reservoir.